Rod Woodson, Mr. Steeler himself, joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Rod? I'm oh, doing good, Rich. Thanks for having me on, bro. Oh, come on. It's been, I haven't heard your voice in a while. I love, love hearing from you. love hearing your stories that you tell, too. Um, your thoughts on the passing of Dan Rooney, Rod? Well, yeah, you know, it's, um, it's very sad for not only Steeler Nation, uh, but just the Rooney family. Um, you know how instrumental he was. As a family man, um, you know, uh, his wife and his kids, um, he, he did everything for them. And, um, you know, we all are going to pass away sooner or later, but the influence that he had on the, Pits- the city of Pittsburgh, and not only that, you just got to think about, you know, an uh, uh, NFL owner who has influence on being named the ambassador to Ireland from Barack Obama in 2009. Um, I mean, that's how he was thought of around the U.S. Um, I think he just he had a tremendous impact. You were just talking about the Rooney Rule, and you know uh, that's something that he just wanted people to look out. He wanted people to look out of the box for leaders and people of influence. Uh, he wanted people to get away from the norm, and and he was willing to go on the line for that. Uh, he did that when he hired a very unknown Mike uh, Mike Tomlin. As their head coach for the Pittsburgh Steelers, people really didn't know who he was. He did the same thing when they, when he hired Bill Cowher. You know, people really didn't know who Bill Cowher was, um, but they do now. And I think as a leader uh, for the Steeler Nation and for the city and that organization, um, there will never be another uh, Dan Rooney. You know, and, and uh, it's interesting. I mentioned at the top of the show too, Rod, is, is here's a guy – who wanted to make sure that hiring practices in the league were on the up and up and were diverse. And the guy who did it is a guy who never fired a coach or had to hire anybody because of his style of management. How did that, how did that permeate a locker room knowing that your coach wasn't going anywhere? Well, I I think um, leadership does uh, permeate, any facility uh, around the globe. It doesn't matter uh, what type of team you're putting together, the NFL team or a corporate 500 team. Um, you know, if, if there's some type of animosity and things going on in the higher ups, that will trickle down to everybody else. And for Dan Rooney, you never had those issues. Um, you know, because he's always going to take care of his guys. You know, when I first got there in 1987, uh, the chief was still alive, his dad. And he reminds me so much of him because the chief, after practice, would come in the locker room with his big old cigarette and his big glasses and talk to every single player and ask them how they're doing and how's your family. And then Dan Rooney had that same philosophy. He was just such a family man, and he loved this, He loved all his players. He would come in the locker room and ask them about their family and their, and their kids and, and how everything's going. And that just that permeated to wanting to do well. Uh, for not only for yourself personally, but for Dan Rooney, the owner, because he he did everything in, the, in his power to make you comfortable when you're in that facility uh, for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, though, when you first came in, though, Rod, didn't wasn't there some sort of a contract dispute though when you came out of Purdue? I we, I did have a contract dispute. Okay, um, how would that go? How did that uh, play out? With, with you Steve know, Rooney? it played out well. You know, uh, <laughs> I've been I, I've really been blessed to, to kind of. Uh, you know, especially early in my career, to mm-hmm. wear black and gold uh, when I played uh, high school football. Then I went to Purdue. Uh, that's the uh, you that's know, right. black and gold. And then I went to the Steelers. Yes, you did. And they were black and gold. So it was kind of like uh, it was in my fate to, to play for that organization. And then the city I'm from, from Fort Wayne, Indiana, uh, believe it or not, Rich, it has three rivers that run through the city. And then you look at Pittsburgh, it has three rivers to run to the city. That's so right. my fate was to play for them, um, even though at first I was trying to hold out and uh, and run track over in Europe. And I did. I had a wonderful time running track. But, uh, you know, I always wanted to play football. and But to p- play for Dan, you know, and his family, it was awesome because everything he did, he did it with love. Uh, I mean, the only t- only quorum that I had probably with Pittsburgh is that I remember one time me and Carnell Lake, you know, when you first get, when we first got there in 87, Carnell got there in 88, mm-hmm. um, we didn't have breakfast. We didn't have hot breakfast, so we were like guys were going out and getting McDonald's. You know, they were just getting like the worst breakfast you can get. And I remember going in there talking to Dan Rooney. We were like, okay, listen, we will take some of our money 
and we will buy a hot breakfast for the team. Mm -hmm. So we can have something that's a little bit better for the players. And Dan looked at me and said, no, you guys are not doing that. We will take care of it. It will get done. And I think like four days later, five days later, we had hot breakfasts every single morning that Dan Rooney had for the players. And, I mean, he listened to the players. He did everything he could in, in, his, in his power to make the players comfortable so they can, they can do their best. And uh, any time um, a player might have a, um, you know, felt uncomfortable or disagreement, uh, Dan was open to hearing better suggestions. And I think that's what made him so popular. Yeah, what, that's why I brought up the fact that, you know, when your Steeler career started, it could have gotten off on the very wrong foot, and yet here you are, Mr. Steeler. That's the reason why I brought that up, and I had no idea that, that you were so integral in the, uh, in the history of breakfasts with the Pittsburgh Steelers, Rod. Is it so Antonio Brown having an omelet bar, he would not have that if, if it wasn't for well, you? Is that what you're saying, I mean, Rod? I, I can't say that because now the NFL, <laughs> everybody has their kitchens in the NFL. <laughs> uh, but I know back then, you know, yeah. um, we, you, nobody had, had had breakfast. You had to go get your own breakfast and bring it in and eat. And guys were bringing in the wrong stuff to eat. And uh, I know Car Carnell and I were like, okay, we need some decent food around here. <laughs> and, uh, but he listened. And you know, mm -hmm. that's what you love about a guy like that because, you know, when I came in, like I said just a little while ago, you know, the chief was the same way. He listened to everything you had to say. And, and Dan was the exact same way. And kind of unfortunately that I didn't finish my career in Pittsburgh, but, you know, that family, you know, I owe my, you know, the start of my career and the bulk of my career, I owe to them. Pro Football Hall of Famer Rod Woodson, a couple more minutes left here, remembering Dan Rooney on the Rich Eisen Show. And uh, all, th all, all the local uh, television stations broke into their coverage to report on the passing of Dan Rooney. Flags across the state of Pennsylvania are at half staff right now, Rod. Can you give voice to what Dan Rooney meant to the Keystone State and obviously Western Pennsylvania, which has such a lush history for the sport of football? just about his, his life and the way he, he lived it. Um, there's no person that was so much more for family and community than Dan Rooney. And everything he did, he did for the city, for the state, um, for his family. And you want people like that. And I think, and I said it, <clears throat> excuse me, a little while ago, that that's why Barack Obama put him as the ambassador to Ireland in 2009 because he had a he had an influence on people a very good influence on people and he wanted that to rub off on him representing the United States to the country of Ireland and that's that's a big honor if you really think about it and that's just the, that's just the impact that he had on our community not just in the National Football League but as a whole because he had much respect throughout the National Football League, and things that he said and, the, and his viewpoints and the, his stances on certain items had a big impact on where the NFL went and where they're at right now. And uh, let's assume John Madden is correct, because I'd like to believe it, that the busts talk to each other at night. What are they saying tonight in Canton, Rod? Well, right now they're a little, they're a little sad. Um, but all the brotherhoods, but all the brothers who are Hall of Famers who have passed away, uh, you know, they're they're having a, a really nice party because another great member uh, is going to do something wonderful in that in those rooms, and they're they're going to have some good they're going to have some good, good conversations. You got to really think about it. I mean, that guy's had a lot of influence. He's seen a lot of things change throughout the history of football since he's been in it, and since his dad purchased the team way back in the day. Um, and, you know, I think the city's going to miss him. Uh, I'm going to miss him. But more than anything, the NFL is going to miss him. Rod, I appreciate the time, uh, um, you know, remembering Dan Rooney. Um, and, oh, congrats on your, uh, your, I guess, your promotion, right? You're the, you're the cornerbacks coach now for Jack Del Rio. I am now, yes, now Flat I'm out. Now, like, officially. You are the guy. I, I'm the guy. You are. Yeah. Have you seen Marshawn around there at all, Rod? Uh, he was in the building. Okay. He was in the building. How did he look to you? Like he ready looked, to go? He looked great. <laughs> I mean, he looked, I mean, I don't know if he really gets out of shape. 
Okay. Uh, but it wasn't like, you know, a lot of guys a year later, they looked like they never played football. Mm-hmm. It looked like he played football. It looked like he's ready to play. So it would be awesome to get, you know, uh, West Oakland's finest, mm-hmm. and Oakland Tech's finest, to come to play for a great organization, uh, especially a good young team that we're that we're building over there. So it would be uh, interesting to see what happens. He's ready to create, as Dion would say, the business decisions for – other corners in the league? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I think our corners, in, our corners in, in training camp, if he was there, we'd have to make some really smart decisions. Did you? How many business decisions did you make, Rod? It's very rare. But I tell you what, I did make – I made a couple. Um, who? On who? Who? Um, the running back for the Cleveland Browns, uh, Kevin Mack. Okay. Kevin, Kevin Mack had me make a couple because he knocked out a couple of our, our players right before he came my way. Mm-hmm. And I was uh, stock blocking with a receiver. I threw the receiver down, and the receiver kind of tripped over, or at least made Kevin Mack fall. And I was like, oh, my gosh, please don't come my way again. (laughs) That's the one time I really didn't want to hit anybody because I seen him knock out Greg Lloyd, uh, uh, Larry Griffin, and our cornerback, Delton Hall, all in the same game. Wow. That's yeah. that's why okay. you made a business decision. I, I thought it was a smart decision. <laughs> well, you're a smart guy. Rod, I love you. Great chatting with you. You too. Take care, brother. You got to say, that's Pro Football Hall of Famer Rod Woodson at Rod Woodson 26. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.